What we are witnessing are war crimes, blatant barbaric war crimes, slaughtering civilians, abusing hostages, taking babies from their, ruth from their mothers. There are no words to describe such savagery. This is Israel's 9-11. This is Israel's 9-11, and Israel will do everything to bring our sons and daughters back home. These images are horrifying. They are hard to see, and they are impossible to fully internalize. But I'm showing you all of this for a reason. Today, many members of the international community are supporting Israel, yes. But if history has taught us anything, we know that tomorrow that may not be the case. The international community, and particularly the UN and the Security Council, have a very short memory when it comes to Israel. The terror that we endure quickly becomes a side note. But this time will not be the same. We will not let the world forget the atrocities our country suffered. I want you all to remember what sadistic evil Israel is currently at war with. The world must not forget what I have shown you today. As the Security Council prepares to meet today, Israel has one sole demand. Hamas's war crimes must be unequivocally condemned. This unimag unimaginable atrocity must be condemned. Israel must be given steadfast support to defend ourselves, to defend the free world, Israel will not accept any false, false immoral comparisons between a savage terror group that targets innocent and the democratic state of Israel. This is not the, the comparison that the UN or the Security Council can do. There is no reconciling with genocidal terrorists. Israel will exact a heavy price on Hamas so that what we witnessed will never repeat itself. Regrettably, history for some media and politicians start when Israelis are killed. Our people have endured one deadly year after another. We came to the Security Council month after month warning of the consequences of Israeli impunity and international inaction. We know only too well that the messages about Israel's right to defend itself will be interpreted by Israel as license to kill, to pursue on the very path that led us here. If this is about peace, then the way to it is not through further entrenching oppression and occupation, but by ending it. You cannot say nothing justifies killing Israelis and then provide justification for killing Palestinians. We are not subhumans. Let me repeat, we are not subhumans. We will never accept a rhetoric that den denigrates our humanity and reneges our rights. A rhetoric that ignores the occupation of our land and oppression of our people. There is no right to security that trumps the right of a nation to self-determination. Everybody in the room behind me, who will be meeting in a few minutes, agree on the end game. Israel expects and demands political and military support while advancing goals that are fundamentally at odds with international legitimacy and consensus. Its policies are an assault on our humanity on international law, on peace, and are a threat for its own people. 
Can those supporting Israel ignore its colonialist and racist agenda? That would be self-defeating. A different path is possible. I repeat, a different path is possible. But it cannot ignore the lives and rights of the Palestinian people. It must guarantee them equal measures of freedom and security.